Like every other business out there, our industry is a little bit worried about how this pandemic is going to affect our business. Stay with me, I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks on how to safeguard your practice. Hi, my name is Jeremy Smith. Over the last 15 years, I've been an agent, a manager, an owner-operator of a brokerage, and for the last seven years, a business coach, traveling the country and helping agents and agency owners grow their practice. Stay with me because I'm gonna try and help you grow yours. If you're familiar with YouTube, then you know the game. Please like and subscribe and ring the bell. All right, so I wanted to get a quick video out to everybody. Uh, obviously, this, uh, this corona pandemic is scary, uh, and it's ever-changing. I, I, I wrote some notes on what I wanted to say on this video three days ago, and they've been outdated three different times in those three days. This, this uncertainty about where things are going, it's a bit unnerving. I wanted to talk with you guys today about your practice, because I know that a lot of you are out there worried about what is this pandemic going to do to my insurance practice. We may or may not get hit as hard as, per se, uh, you know, the airline business or other service businesses, but it's going to probably affect our business. I'm already hearing from agents around the country that it's getting harder and harder to get in front of clients, to get in front of prospects, especially uh, those of you that might be doing seminars, to get in front of people in group seminars or group settings is getting harder and harder. So I wanted to take a few minutes and I want to give you guys some best practices that I'm hoping will help you a little bit as we go through this unforeseen pandemic that we're about to go through. I've broken this up into talking about things that those of you that are new, agents that aren't super established, uh, things that you can do uh, to help yourself and your practice as you go through this. And I've broken it into the other group of those of you that are more established, that you've got big books of business, you've got lists of clients to talk to, and hopefully take some pressure off of this scare thing of how is this going to affect my business. So let's jump into this. Let's talk for a second and first and most, let's talk about the agents that are new to the business, that you don't have big books of business, okay? Most likely, uh, you are buying leads, you are buying data, you're making cold phone calls, you're sending mailers out. That's probably not gonna stop. In fact, you're probably gonna have to do more of it because once again, the conversions on your mailers, the conversions on your setting of appointments over the phone, they're probably gonna go down because of the fear that's out there. So you're probably gonna have to even do more of it, okay? But one good uh, technique that I'm going to tell everybody to do if you're, if you're buying data is check the accuracy of your data, okay? I get it that if everybody's buying data from different companies, your accuracy percentage is going to be a little bit different. But let me just say this. Your accuracy data should fall somewhere in the neighborhood of 70 to 75%, okay? I'm talking the actual vitals that you're buying, the address, the phone number, are they still alive, that type stuff. You know, 70-75% of your data should be accurate. If you find it's not, I'm going to strongly urge you to start getting on the phone, get on the internet and doing some research and maybe shopping companies because that's where you should be at from an accuracy standpoint. Uh, a lot of you are sending out mailers still, okay? You're sending out lead cards. You may want to change the demographics, maybe also just for your phone calls. For example, you may be uh, purchased, uh, your, your, your normal numbers may be to purchase age 60 to age 80 inside of a five mile radius. This pandemic is hitting older people the hardest. Those 80 year olds, they're going to be even more reluctant than anyone else to let you into their home to talk with you. So you may want to think about changing your demos a little bit. You may want to start going and say, maybe going 55 to 75 or 55 to 70 uh, as your target market and then spreading out the distance in which you mail to people. Uh, so you may want to go 15 or 20 miles as opposed to five in my example. But just keep your demo in, in mind, lowering those ages for a short period or for this time being as we go through this may help your conversions a little bit. You you better be used to uh, the phone time, I'm thinking already if you're in this business, but you might want to get used to even more phone time. Some of us are used to sending mailers out and waiting for the inbound to come, uh, and then that's, that's how we run our business. We're most likely going to have to get in a mindset where we're prepared to follow up those lead cards and follow up those non-responders with phone calls, okay, if you're not already doing that. 
uh, you're probably going to have to rely more on the phone than you ever had before uh, because the phone is where you can address these issues right up front. You can address the issues of, first of all, selling even more so than what your mail, verbiage on your mailer, and second of all, covering their concerns like, are you clean? Uh, is it safe for you to even come over? Okay, The phone's going to become your friend during this time, even more so than it was before. Let me jump in for a little bit now and talk to those of you that have, are a little bit more established, that you've got, uh, you've got a book of business, you've got clients and prospects and people that know your name. Those of you that were in that first group, don't stop listening because there's going to be some stuff here that still applies to you. First of all, for anybody watching this, if you don't have a CRM, a client relationship manager, you need to get one. It's probably the most important thing I can tell you. Okay. Uh, those of you that have established books of business, one of the reasons why a CRM is going to be so important to you is this. The reason why, one of the reasons why, it's going to be harder for us to get in front of prospects and clients right now than it was yesterday is because of trust. You know, overall trust, but trust that we're not going to get them sick. It's going to be much easier for you to call up and go sit across the table from a client, from somebody that knows who you are, than it is from a prospect that never knew who you were prior to this phone call. Okay? So it's going to be a lot easier to get in front of those people. That's why a CRM will do you justice. And, and I would say that anyway before a pandemic, that it's one of the most vital things of a practice. I know a lot of people don't have one. Find one. There's a lot of options out there for you. You don't have to spend a lot of money. Uh, now's a perfect time if it's, not in your, uh, if it's not in your business practice to get it in there. Okay. And those of you that, uh, that are uh, uh, already established, for sure, because you've got a lot of clients in there, there's going to be future business on. A CRM will help you uh, make sure that that business doesn't get lost. Uh, listen, I understand that as this video comes out today, uh, test kits are uh, pretty limited. But when they become available and, it's, and they are abundant, I'd strongly urge you guys to go get tested, maybe even regularly if we get to the point where, uh, where test kits are available and abundant. And make sure your clients and prospects know that this is on the front of your mind too, that you have been tested, you don't have the virus, and it's, their concerns of getting sick are also your concerns. The biggest advice I have for anybody out there in our business right now, if you're concerned about how your business is going to continue to go on uh, like it has been, would be this. Learn to sell some other products. I know there's a lot of people out there that are Medicare specialists. Learn how to sell final expense. I know there's a lot of people out there that are final expense specialists and have books of business that all they've sold is final expense. Learn to sell Medicare. They're both super easy learning curves. They just are, okay? Uh, and they go hand in hand. So those of you that have sold all of your clients' Medicare supplements and saved them money, you want to do something with that premium, go fix another need or another liability that they have. Okay, rather than continuing to try and plow a new field and find new prospects. There's other products too. Cancer, uh, dental, hearing, and vision, stroke, heart attack. All of those things go hand in hand with our clientele or those people that we've sold Medicare supplements and final expense to. Spend some time to get educated on these other things and go take care of your clients with these other products. Okay. Obviously, annuities, long-term care, life insurance, the learning curves are, t are longer on those. Hopefully, uh, everybody is you know, at a point where you're thinking about and trying to get educated on those products as well. All of these things are the products that will make you a full-service insurance agent. I've said in past videos, and I'll say over and over again, the hardest thing we have to do as insurance agents is to get in front of people. Uh, you want to really be smart, in my opinion, about your business. Learn how to sell all of these products so you don't have to have be in front of so many qualified pro uh, prospects. And you can sell more products to a smaller number of people. Okay. The cross-selling thing is, here's the deal. These other products, these other needs, these other liabilities that your clients are, are looking for, somebody's going to go sell them if you don't. Okay. This is a perfect time to get educated and get out there in front of your clients and sell these other products. If you're not using a fact finder, I know that all of you that uh, I talk with on a daily basis, I'm always pushing this. It is a huge, it's probably the number one thing that I'm a believer that it should be in somebody's sales process. Okay, if you don't have a fact finder, 
let me know. I'll get you one. All you got to do is subscribe uh, and ring the bell. Uh, I'll get you my fact finder. You can put your logos on it and make it your own. It's such a huge part of a sales process, even if we're not in a pandemic, but even especially now, if you're going to go out there and try and start selling other products to your current clients. Last thing I want to say is this. There's an elephant in the room on every phone call and every living room right now. This elephant is this coronavirus pandemic, okay? As you're calling your prospects, as you're calling your clients and you're trying to, to get in with them to talk about insurance needs, shoot this elephant right up front. Talk to them uh, about this pandemic. Uh, it's a great warm-up topic because everybody's talking about it anyway, but let them know that it's top of mind for you. Their safety is top of mind for you, that you've been tested, or you're going to be when that's available, that, that, that you understand that you, you know, there's things that need to get done, things you guys need to talk about, but, but it is top of mind for you and making sure that they're staying safe. And here's another little tip too. These clients that you're calling up, make sure that they don't need help from you. You know, you want to make a client for life? Maybe going to the grocery store and picking up some things for them, I promise you, will set you apart from every agent in the world if you can do little things like that to make sure that, there's, that their needs are taken care of and that you're thinking about them. Uh, those little things will go miles into making a raving fan out of your database. My last thing is this. Please stay safe throughout this pandemic. Uh, please uh, uh, obviously like and comment and subscribe. That lets us know that uh, we're on the right track. And let me know through the comments if there's other things that you're concerned about as we go through this that we can get some information out to you to help you uh, during this unforeseen time, okay? Hope uh, your family stays safe and we'll look forward to seeing you in our next video.